Okay, uh, welcome back. So this is another video on um, creating our light sensor. And so this is again an embedded system uh, that we are creating um, using Fusion 360 electronics. And so we have uh, up to this point, we'll go to take a look at our, our schematic here. We're kind of working left to right. Um, we've added a little our power infrastructure, which is uh, mostly you know, some battery and, and some connectors and then this, um, this power mon board. We've got our UART here, so we can do some communication with the sensor. We've got our oscillator, so we've got a high precision 32.768 kilohertz oscillator that we'll use to, uh, um, um, to, to allow this uh, STM32 mainly to keep very accurate time, which turns out to be really important in, this, in the outdoor sensor uh, where you care about when those samples are taken, that sort of thing, time stamping data. All right, so right now what I want to focus on is the processor core itself, or the, the microcontroller. Um, we're using STM32L432 for this design. Um, maybe not the, the, the absolute best part for this design, you know, you know, if we were to try, try to optimize cost or things like that. But it's a pretty, um, it's, it's a well-known um, part here at, um, it's, it's a part that we use in multiple sort of instances here at, um, at ISC. Um, so it turns out to be a, a, a pretty handy part for this kind of work. All right, so let me show you the kind of where we're going with the schematic here. So we're going to hook it up like this. And so um, so we're going to be hooking, um, hooking up um, different parts of this, of this chip. And so um, I may refer back to this a couple of times while we're doing it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> All right, so the first thing I want to hook up is um, is PA0 here. And so I'm going to add a net there, and I will label it as, um, actually, let me name it here as um, that's going to be the 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 pin that we take our light sensor data in on and so let's go over here and look and so that's PA0 so let's go to PA2 and we'll add TX and RX And it warned me because remember, I've got other name, you know, other nets that are named the same thing, right? So when it's asked me if I really want to connect those because what's really happened here is PA2 is now connected directly to this resistor right here. So these two points are connected now through this name. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna move this this over here. Move this one in. All right. Okay, and so so you might be asking yourself, well, how how do you know that this pin PA two is where this TX pin ought to go? Well, that's a really good question. And so, in a modern microcontroller, pins can do uh, multiple things. There's they're they're, they're all hooked up to, to 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 different. There's multiplexers behind each one of these pins to route it to interesting peripherals. Um, and so, you know, what we use here is we use Cube IDE, which is, um, it has integrated, Cube IDE is something that is produced, it's an Eclipse variant produced by ST, or, you know, uh, tailored by ST, I guess I should say. Uh, but what it does is they integrated this tool that they wrote called CubeMX, which is a um, configuration tool that lets you um, select different pins and, and things like that um, to, um, to, to explore how these different um, pins could be arranged in your design. And then once you get things the way you want them, it will, you know, you can generate a package of driver code that will help you do initialization on things like the low power UART or a timer or um, you still have to go in and actually 
um, you know, select what you want because these things these things are very flexible, of course. And so, um, yeah, so, so you still have to, to work at it, but this really gets you way down the road. And so, um, you know, so when you select a pin like, let's say, PA1 here, it could be any of these functions and so or any of these these features. And so um, I'll select the one I want. And then, um, you know, that's how I'm going to, in some ways, work with this tool to select the pins. But then in my schematic, then I am, um, you know, using that to, to set the, the pin that I want here. So you've got, it's this co-design process where, you know, you, you, you are, the schematic is uh, being co-designed in any ways how this, this, the pins you use here will be co-designed along with the, um, a, a, along with the software sort of system um, that you're, you know, you're, you're building the software in this tool called, you know, Cube IDE, which is basically Eclipse. All right, so um, I'm going to keep using this here. I'm going to have got this GPIO output here, and that is going to be uh, PA4. So let me come over here and I'll get PA4. I'm going to use this to, I'm going to name this uh, TSL 237 enable. And so that'll be how I'm going to power that sensor. And then let me come back over to this. Um, okay, PA8 will be p eight. I'm going to name that um, clock out. And I'm also going to, on that particular pin, I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to go ahead and route this to that. So I've got a test point on that clock out. That lets me go and look at the stability of the internal clock. You know, these sorts of microcontrollers all use what are called phase lock loops to um, allow you to, uh, uh, you know, set the frequency that you, you want to run at. And so you can use this, um, this clock out pin to pass out um, different, different clocks. So you can kind of see what they are, uh, what they actually are, of course, you know, the tool, a tool like Cube IDE over here, you know, it's got this, this big clock configuration tool um, to take what is sort of a tedious and, and basically uh, fraught with sort of problems. You know, it, it's easy to get the clock configuration in something that has um, as much flexibility in the clocks as a modern microcontroller. It's easy to get it wrong. And so this tool really helps you um, tr get it right, <coughs> get it right for your system. All right, okay, so there's clock out. We've got that hooked up. Let's come over here and what else do I need to do? All right, so, down, down. so PA13 is software DIO. So we'll go ahead and name that. And then let's add another one here. And we'll call that SW clock here. All right. So those are going to be my JTAG links or my um, SWD um, in the sort of uh, uh, modern vernacular of, of debugging links. This is a, an SWD link. Um, there's one other signal that's associated with that, and that is on uh, PB3 is SWO. That's my trace output. And so I'll go ahead and hook it up. Go ahead and name that uh, SWO. Ooh, move it there, and then I'll move it back. Okay. All right, so the other one I need is reset. So I will connect it here. Reset has an internal pull-up. So you wouldn't necessarily have to hook it up if you weren't gonna hook it up to a debugger. But since we are here um, uh, in RST, let's say okay. Put that 
there. Okay. Um, the other thing I'm going to hook up here is I'm going to hook up to PC14, and that's going to be my oscillator or OSC. And so I'll hook up right here. This is where my oscillator is going to come in. And I will name that OSC. So give me a warning. Hey, do you want to connect that? Yes, I do. Let's lay in that dialog box on top of my stuff. Okay. Um, all right. So what else do I, what am I missing here? Um, so we're down, clock out, uh, sensor power. We did all that. Oscillator, SWO. I want to ground the boot pin here. Um, this, this is a, a pin that allows me to select how the system boots. And so I'm going to copy this over here. Okay, and then let's go ahead and hook up our power supplies here. Let's copy this over to here. And then we'll go ahead and hook these up. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Use this as ground. I'm going to move this over and then I will add grounds out here. These VSS pins. Okay, so this E-pad here, I'll go ahead and hook it to ground two. Um, that is the center pad on the chip. So we'll go ahead and connect it to ground. The center pad being the pad that's right in the middle of the part on the bottom um, to, to do some heat sinking, but also really in this part, this part's not gonna get hot. Um, so we're gonna be running, you know, uh, milliwatts at most through it. So. Uh, in this particular case, really what we're doing there is trying to give it a really solid um, ground connection um, so you don't end up with uh, um, <coughs> differentials in ground across the chip, which can cause problems with things like A to D measurements. All right, so so that's, that's that for the processor. Now, um, one thing you have to um, keep in mind with a, a, a processor like that, you need more decoupling capacitors. And so I'm going to go ahead and copy this one here. Um, copy. And I'll add some decoupling here. And I'll copy it. And I'll put it there. I'm going to go ahead and give this a value. And I'm going to say this one is 0.1 uh, microfarad. And I'm going to say that this one here is, its value is going to be 0.1, 0 0.1 microfarad. I'm going to go ahead and change this. Zero point one microfarad. Okay. I'm going to make this one um, a little bigger. Um, so I'll make it uh, one microfarad. So give it a little bit of bulk capacitance there. Um, these are going to both be in the 0603 package. And so then I will copy this. Copy this. So I'll hook them between power and ground. And again, this doesn't say where these are physically going to go, but, but generally... These are going to go right underneath the chip. Um, connect these up to there. On the bottom right below it. So let's go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and draw a box around this. Um, so we'll go over to the document layer here, or the document, and then we'll get on the, 
the info layer and start drawing here. Oh, I need my dotted line. Make this uh, short dash. And then we'll add some text here, and this will be the um, controller. We'll add it up there. Done. Okay. Okay. So that's the microcontroller um, and, and its pins. And so we may have to come back to this. We may find out, oh, we made a mistake here or there. Uh, but for now, this looks good. Um, we'll come back to it um, in the next video. We'll go ahead and wire up the, the sensor and the JTAG link, and I think that will um, get us, so we'll do these two things. This mounting stuff isn't necessary in, in Fusion, and I'll show you why that is down the road, uh, but we'll go ahead and get these two um, devices put on the board as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this for now here. Say yes. All right, that's... Um, Let's, uh, let's stop there for this time, and we'll, uh, the next time we will, um, like I said, we'll add those other two parts, and that'll be it for the schematic, at least for now, and then we'll go in and we'll have to uh, maybe make some adjustments later if we find problems, when we, when we find problems, uh, which is uh, uh, maybe an acknowledgement that, that problems happen. That's just part of the deal. All right, okay. More next time.